Hey, Satanico here once again for God Loves Comics, and I've got five, yes, five packages to open right now. Um, I have made a grave error in getting back on eBay. So now the packages have stacked up, and uh, but I think I got some pretty good deals or some pretty cool comics to look at. Let's see what we have here. Have Sir, most of the packages, and then um, I've got one big box over there that only has one comic in it, but it was packaged very safely. So, let's start with this one, and just a white envelope, and these are mostly, I think, Bronze Age, one Golden Age comic that is very exciting. But these Bronze Age comics are pretty exciting too because I think I got some in very good condition. Um, this is a continuation of what I've suddenly kind of become obsessed with getting, which you would think I would have had a long time ago, but I'm just getting them now. And that would be a lot of Barry Windsor Smith's run on Conan. Which is only 24 issues, and as I've said before, a few of the issues were done by Gil Kane. But this one was Barry Windsor Smith, and this one has been hard to get. There have been plenty of issues of number 10. In fact, I think there was a number 10 that was just auctioned off by uh, my comic shop. It was actually slabbed, and it was like a 9.6 or 9.2 or something, and sold for over $140. Uh, this issue... I think I paid um, 15 for it, which isn't bad. It was, I think it's supposed to be in fine. Yeah, very fine. Excellent cover gloss. Um, this is, I believe, a double size issue. It's got the square bound cover, and those tend to, for whatever reason, not hold up very well a lot of times from this era. But. See Barry Smith's signature right there where my thumb is. You see some not so good faces. That looks like cer cer certainly like Edvard Munch's The Scream there. And but um, I'm very interested in this issue because uh, like I, I've been looking for a copy for a little while, and this one has always kind of evaded me, only because someone's outbid me on it, or there just haven't been very nice copies available. This one is not perfect by any means, but I think it qualifies at least as a fine, maybe a very fine. It looks like a maybe a seven, but then it's got one pretty nice, and not by nice, I mean not nice, crease right there above Call the Conqueror's head uh, that I can actually feel. So that is one of the biggest flaws that I can see on the issue, maybe a little bit of thumb creasing along it, uh, but it's hard to say. It's, you know, it's not really well bagged. It's bagged fine, but, you know, you can see the comic is kind of, I thought it was more on this side, but it's actually it's just a little bit more on this side where the, uh, where the spine is, where it's a little over, you know, over running from the board, which just guarantees they'll get them, but it's in fine condition, and so, that's number 10, and now I've got a Friday mail with a few more issues in it. I don't remember exactly what I have, but I'm pretty close. These, these I got relatively recently. I mean, I ordered all of these recently, except for the one comic by itself, which I ordered uh, several weeks back, and I've been meaning to open it to be able to leave feedback. I hope I've got the right comic, because it would look a little fishy otherwise. Okay, these are, I've got four comics here, and they are in different, varying conditions, but mostly they all look really beautiful in the bags. Uh, this is issue number 20 of Conan, and I have got another issue of this. This one is a little bit better shape, even though a little disappointed to see these. There's, it's got a scratch right where my index finger is. Another smaller scratch there. And uh, then some stress along the top. 
and uh, some, you know, some spine ticks. Other than that, it looks really nice. It's not perfectly wrapped by any stretch. This is kind of one of the bad wraps for a Conan book, where you see the C is cut off at the top there. Mm -hmm. And even the 20 cents, the 2 is cut off. Um, so, but that's fine. Uh, it's a nice looking issue. If you remember, if you're one of the two or three people that watched the, um, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 people watched it, but uh, watched the sort of exchange video I did with uh, Pop Fun to Play, he actually sent me this issue. And there was some major flaw with it. I, I think like the back cover or a corner of it was sliced off or something. There was, it, there was some major flaw with it which is probably the only reason he was willing to part with it, because he's very, very much a hardcore collector. I'm sure he had a backup copy, but it was really nice of him to send it to me. And uh, But since that was not the perfect issue, and this is not the perfect issue either, but this is a pretty nice copy. I needed to get another one. Uh, this is the only comic recently that I've just been wanting to get really nice copies of, and I keep, I just keep seeing it pop up on my comic shop and on um, and on uh, eBay and every time I see nice copies I just want to keep buying them and maybe with the idea of selling some of the duplicates the, the lesser copies of course but um, I usually don't have that impulse to buy multiple copies this is a really nice copy I'm looking at right now this is number 19 I don't I think I have this one in my collection. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to get the first 24 issues. I have the main, the big boys. I have number one and I have number 24. I have two copies of number 24. Um, pretty, including a pretty nice copy, about a seven, seven and a half, maybe eight. And then um, I've got a much lo a lower grade copy. It's maybe a four. This issue, number, number 19, looks really great. It's got some spine ticks. And the blue, this is back when Marvel was doing this framing, which a lot of people hated, you know, hate in retrospect. Somehow, I mean, it still looks great. I kind of like the frames, even though they do limit the artist, you know, the artist canvas, which is not ever a good idea. But um, but they, they, they worked out for Marvel for this time period, for a short time, when they had these 20 cents covers. And you can see this has a much better wrapping. You can see the two, you can see the C. It's, uh, nothing's cut off at the bottom, nothing's cut off at the top. Pretty much a perfect wrap, I think. There's one pretty significant little bruise there, and actually I can feel it. One thing I've noticed, oh, well that's not good, okay. This may, this copy may, I don't see a color break, but it may even have a subscription crease. Because I do feel the bump right there, right in the center where it would be. And it does run down a little bit, but I don't see the color break. One thing I've noticed with eBay, um, when you're scrolling over the pictures, you know, enlarged. And uh, particularly with some of these Conans, uh, there was a run on there that the covers would look really beautiful, the front covers. And then you noticed on the back cover, you would notice a subscription crease which was very strange because the back covers are largely white, but you would notice the subscription crease much more noticeably on the back cover. And on, and then you would realize that there was one on the front cover, but it wasn't color breaking. And this may in fact be a case of that, which would be very kind of disappointing. Um, I don't, you know, it's something that this could be pressed out because like I said, I don't see any color break there, but I do, feel the little bump there that suggests that maybe it was a sub crease and this was listed let's see how much did i pay for this um okay i paid 12.50 for this um this was and that's not bad at all actually that's actually a really good price i think um but it was listed as very fine to near mint uh if that's a sub crease, I don't think so. But if it's not, there is, you know, there is a little bump there that suggests, probably doesn't suggest near mint. Otherwise, it's a really nice copy, but maybe a little bit overgraded there. Very impossible to tell, really. I couldn't even see this, this bump on the picture. And I scrolled over these pictures pretty meticulously. 
here is number seven. And I see the uh, little bump again, right in the same spot, right in the center at the very top. Now that may just be the way somebody was handling it. I don't feel anything down the center. I felt like I felt a little bit more on the other one, but it is in a similar place, right in the center. See Barry Smith's signature once again. He was experimenting with all kinds of signatures. This one actually is, I guess, similar to that one. Well, no, see, 19 was when he started putting it in the box, but then uh, the one I showed before had in black ink, and then this is white ink on the black background, but his um, signature was all over the place. This is still a really nice copy, and this copy I paid... Let's see, what did I pay for that? Okay, I paid twelve sixty three for that one. That's not bad at all. Um, and by the way, number twenty, regardless of what condition it's in, I got that for four twenty five. And there were a lot of people. There are a lot of people watching these comics. A lot of people that were bidding on these comics. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty good, pretty good deal to when you can snag one for four bucks or six bucks or 12 bucks because they keep going up and 24 in particular there were a couple of crazy sales for number 24 this uh this past week i was watching now they were beautiful beautiful issues they may have been 9.8s in which case they were worth a lot more than what anybody paid for them but they were one sold for 189 and one sold for 202 dollars those are crazy prices for raw copies of number 24. In fact, those trump, well, I should not, I, I, I never mean to use that word, but those top uh, the prices for number one in most cases. It's crazy uh, bidding on those, and I was bidding on those and was shocked by how high they were. This is number five, and this is one I've been looking for. I had number four that's pretty well scratched up. Um, I think I got a replacement copy of it now, but I didn't have number five. I missed out on maybe a couple of bids on this. This is, again, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. You can see Barry Hoenser Smith's copy when he was still just Barry Smith. You can see a signature there um, very lightly in the bottom corner, but it seems to be changing almost from issue to issue just ever so slightly. Really nice cover, um, and I've been looking for that one for a while as well. Okay, so let's go into another box. And this box only has one comic in, I believe. Maybe two. I think only one. Press between this. So we cut this little piece of tape. So far all Conan. Got a couple of other Bronze Age comics mixed in and okay and this is number 11 to go along with number 10 now number 11 is let's see that's a really nice issue as well nice copy again this one these other issues were saddle were saddle uh stitched which just means you know stapled but number 11 and 10 were kind of square bound, but then I think they also put a staple in them. I, I feel, yeah, I think I feel a staple there, which then is under the cover and the cover presses against it and causes a little bit more of a flaw. But this looks like a very nice copy, and I've been looking for a better copy of this. Actually, I bought a just a beat to pieces, destroyed copy um, during last year's free comic book day. I paid a dollar for it, but the cover is just ripped to pieces, destroyed. Um, the guy even was wondering why I would want it. And I was like, well, it's very smooth and it's a buck. So. But uh, since then, I've needed to get this copy, this issue, um, and 10. And so now I have those, both of those. Um, in pretty good condition. For this one, I paid sixteen fifty, and this is listed as higher grade, whatever that means. It's 
for this issue. I'm looking at it. It really does look fine to very fine. You know, you might be looking at a 7, 7.5. I'm just uh, winging it on those. But uh, it looks pretty nice. So Pretty happy so far. And not exactly last, but second to last comes another small lot. I'm pretty excited about this one. Because this comic, this lot, this guy had some really high-grade comics. Insanely high-grade comics for Bronze Age. Like I said, he had the two Conan 24s. And I looked at those comics over and over and over for flaws and could not find anything. They were legitimate 9.6s, maybe 9.8s. Which is why people kind of went crazy. They went kind of apeshit for two raw copies. And they sold as high as they did. Because if you slab those, if you get a 9.8 on those, then you've scored. Particularly as the prices continue to rise. I feel like Conan is a very hot book right now. Because uh, Marvel got the rights back to it. Absolutely ridiculous. Just beyond idiotic. I cannot even begin to describe how stupid this this was, this packaging. Look at this. I mean, just unbelievable. <sighs> okay. I have finally extricated the comics, hopefully not doing any damage. Now... Continuing the Conan theme. Now I've messed up my comic, my, uh, my camera. Okay, continuing the Conan theme, what I didn't realize is that I actually bought, I was just saying that I was getting double copies. I didn't necessarily intend to do this, but I got a copy of number 20 again. And now this time, this is an absolutely beautiful copy. This is, um, hmm, number 20... And this one, I may have paid more for the prior one, which was listed as fine, very fine. And then this one is listed, uh, uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, this one I only paid, uh, oh no, yeah, I only paid four twenty five for this. This is listed as very fine. I don't see any flaws on it. It looks absolutely beautiful. It is in definitely better condition than the prior one. And no threat of a sub-grease. Looks fantastic. Um, yeah, so that's a beautiful copy. And then this is another duplicate copy because I have one already, but again, it's absolutely beautiful. Number 16, look at that. Again, beautiful. Centered beautifully, and I see very few, if any, flaws on that copy as well. And this one, because it was, it was so nice, I paid, this one was 23.67. 
So it's definitely a little bit pricier, but considering the condition, uh, it still says near mint, and it seems that people were just following what his price, what his guides was, what his uh, grading was, um, and bidding accordingly. Maybe they were looking very carefully at the scans. I was looking very carefully at the scans, and this certainly looks like a near mint copy, in which case, absolutely worth 23 bucks, and it is really beautiful. And then, let's see, I have a couple of other, okay, I have one more Conan, I guess, is another duplicate copy. So I can just sell those lower grade copies probably. This is number 19, and again, another beautiful copy, and this one I paid twelve fifty four. So I think I have three duplicates in there, yes. So you can see there are two copies of 19, both very nice, but the one on the right is definitely the higher grade even though yeah it's definitely the higher grade i thought that this maybe looked a little less bright than this one but this one i may have something akin to a subscription crease i'm still not sure on that and then i have finally I have uh three more comics then i have one more box open sorry for the delay and uh these three Okay, this is, you see all this crazy, look at this, this crazy packaging. Looks like this is, I had to try to pull these comics apart. This tape has ruined this bag, uh, and it potentially almost ruined the comic. And look at that. Uh, you know, I mean, that was just, and even at the bottom, the tape, you know, tore up the comic bag at the bottom. And these were really high grade, beautiful copies of, Bronze Age comics, and they haven't been damaged, but they risked being damaged because of this. Now, this um, this does have some flaws right here. It's right where the number is. It looks like maybe a little bit of overspray, and a uh, tiny, tiny bit of stress on the spine, and then there's a bend in the corner there. A little maybe yeah actually it starts right here so it's close to two inches but it's barely breaks color if at all barely breaks color and otherwise very nice copy and he had that listed as mid-grade and by the way i got this for 99 cents iron man number 49 for 99 cents i was wondering that's why i bought it he's got it listed as mid-grade it looks like a 6.57 um just at a glance. Color gloss is really nice. It's a Gil Kane cover. Really nice purchase. When you can get something for 99 cents like that, I mean, very early issue of Iron Man. You know, not a very early issue, but Iron Man 49, 20 cents. So. And again, this one definitely costs more than 99 cents. I don't think it costs that much more. But this is Iron Man 53, and I believe the first, well, it's first um, appearance of the Black Llama, but I'm not positive. Okay, I only paid 550 for this, and again, this is listed as very fine. It's in really nice condition, really nice cover, um, and I just saw this was a guy. These aren't comics I was particularly looking for. This issue of Iron Man. Or this issue of Iron Man. I wasn't, you know, I haven't been buying any of these. Um, the only Iron Mans I have are ones that I bought off the shelf when I was a kid. But um, these were too nice to pass up. This guy had an incredible, a beautiful collection of Bronze Age comics. It wasn't an extensive collection. He had maybe 30 comics listed, or 30 or 40 comics listed. But they were incredibly incredible condition for Bronze Age and Bronze Age uh, high grade 9.6 and 9.8 are flying they are selling like you know not for me I'm not selling them but they're selling um, at 
Mile High Comics. They said they cannot keep Bronze Age and Silver Age and High Grade on the shelves. And uh, they are the prices are getting crazy when I watch um, ETA Nick's auctions just for High Grade Bronze Age comics. Um, and you're seeing some in the 9.8s are selling for you know, $1,000, $2,000, sometimes $3,000. It's pretty crazy. This one was actually the comic that I was really excited about seeing because it was, again, in such beautiful condition. Now, I may as well take it out of the bag because the bag has been destroyed by this completely idiotic uh, packaging, which um, better the bag than the comic itself, right? I paid eleven fifty six for this. Um... Let's see. How many people bid on this? It had five bids, and um, someone, the closest bid was 11.06. I just came in in the last five seconds and got it for 11.56. Perfectly worth it, I think, because the condition on this was absolutely stellar. I think a near mint copy, great cover. The interiors, the interior art, I don't think is anything special. I think it's by Bob Brown. But let's take a look at this raw copy because I'm going to have to put it in a different bag anyway. And I think I'm out of bags. Let's take a look and see how clean, crisp, beautiful the back cover is. Not perfectly wrapped because you can see a little bit of the front cover along here, but absolutely flawless in the back and absolutely flawless in the front this there's a little line there that's just uh again uh production error it's just a little overspray um maybe even related to the where they did this kind of stippling on the jaguar um really cool cover kind of <laughs> Uh, with a black widow. I don't know why he or how he managed to grab her a head full of her hair um, from that position, but whatever. I don't care about that. The design elements and everything else are really cool, and then this is a beautiful copy. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I was excited about is this is a 25 cent comic. It is from... 1975. Bob Brown, Finney Coletta, but it's a 1975 comic and it looks exactly like it would have when it was first sold. It looks exactly like it did when it first appeared on the spinner rack. How many years ago? It's unbelievable. 1975. So you're talking about 25 years and you're talking about 35 years and you're talking, I cannot believe it. What? 43 years? Is that correct? It sounds insane that 25 cent comics were 43 years ago. Crazy. And this comic has never been read. Never been opened. I can feel it. It doesn't... It's, and actually the art inside by Brown and Coletta is pretty cool. There's a lot of... Uh, sort of misogynistic elements here, which um, you've got Black Widow being kicked in the head, aside from what you see on the cover. She's being kicked in the head, and earlier I just saw, if I can find it again, a scene where Daredevil smacks her on the ass, and she calls him a male chauvinist. So they're definitely playing with the element of, uh, you know, that that very sort of uh, sexist cover, um, but playing with it and apparently enjoying it at the same time. Actually, this is really nice art. I'm surprised. It's, you know, that looks like a Frank Miller sequence right there, um, where my thumb is. Um, again, by Bob Brown and Vinnie Coletta. And I've seen Bob Brown's work. I mostly know him from um, the Champions, but of course he was a guy who did a lot of work in the Silver Age but I don't usually get too excited about his work, but that one, the interior is actually really nice. I didn't expect that. I bought it because the cover is beautiful and the copy is just exquisite. 
one more box. It's this big priority mailbox. It just has one comic in it. And then I will be done. Sorry for the length of this video. I will hopefully edit out some of this nonsense. Okay, so far we've uh, seen Bronze Age comics. I think we're seeing some really beautiful copies. I was very fortunate to get, I think, at a good price. And now, late Golden Age comic that unquestionably is a classic. Very late Golden Age. Um, I think not, not like timely. 1950s. You cannot tell. Maybe you can see the science there. It's upside down. Package much better, much easier. A little bit of bubble wrap. And then slides right out. And it looks beautiful. Beautiful. Not uh, a little bit of kind of a strange kind of fading effect, but there we go. Weird Science 21. Not super white. It looks actually more white on the video as I'm watching the video than it does in person. It looks almost like there's a little bit of bleeding into the white cover, but look at this absolute beauty. Uh, I get this for $111. Bidding was pretty heavy, I believe. $111.99. Plus, of course, shipping. Um, but, yeah. And this comic had 30 bids on it. So, and I have a relatively new account on eBay after having a an account for a long time. I closed it and for a few years and so I have a brand new account really. Um, and so I'm sure a lot of these people with thousands and thousands of uh, you know of, of feedback, there's a guy with 74 you know 7400 feedback, um, are a little surprised when someone with under five probably sneaks in and wins it at the very end when there are 30 bids. Pretty hot and heavy bidding um, but looks like the last bid was $101 and I won at 111 which I probably put in in the last five seconds. I don't think I overpaid. Um, this comic was listed, I don't know if he put a condition on it or not. Let's see. Not really. He didn't, he, oh okay, he did. 6.0, fine. And I think that's accurate fair. Um, spine has some light wear on it. Staples are in good condition. All pages are there with no folds or tears or nice off-white color. Not brittle. Um, this is from May 1950 to 1953. Okay, that's EC Comics. But anyway, beautiful, beautiful copy. That is a Wally Wood cover. Um, this is maybe the highest grade, aside from the late, later post, um, the post Frederick Wortham, um, time period where I got the, uh, the piracy issue, which was a really beautiful copy. This is maybe the highest grade, um, EC that I have, that I can think of. And we're talking a classic Wally Wood cover. You can see Wally Wood's signature right there, dinosaur, and then the interior which the cover alone, um, sort of the classic Wally Wood, is going to jack up the price a little bit, but then the interior. You don't just get Al Williamson, you get Al Williamson with Frank Frazetta on a Story 2's company, which is only a six page story, but you know, Frazetta, anytime you get Williamson, and particularly when you get Frazetta, uh, you're talking something that is very desirable for a lot of people. And this is a really nice looking 
Really nice looking copy. I see very little spine wear. The Okay, I see a little bit more when I turn it to the side. There's a little bit of chipping and stuff in the color, but not particularly bad. Though the banner here and the logo is not particularly white, but the image itself is beautiful and there's very little obvious wear and tear. It's a really nice copy. Really nice copy, particularly considering this from uh, 1950s. And as I said, Al Williamson, Frank Frazetta, they both signed their work in this. And then you've got Joe Orlando did a seven page um, that was written by Bill Gaines. And what else? Got a Ray Bradbury story that was adapted by Al Feldstein with a Jack Kamen art, which is really nice. And of course you also have the, aside from the wood cover, you also have a story by Wally Wood as written by Gaines and Feldstein as well. It's Wood inking himself and colored by Marie Severin. And that's on the story EC Confidential, which is one of the great classics of one of the EC classics you know, um, that's been discussed many times in the comics journal and elsewhere. So very exciting to get that comic. And in fact, to get all of these comics, um, as you can see, I think you're some beautiful copies all together, pretty good haul. And I'm very happy to have them. And that's it. That's my comics haul. I hope I will stay away from buying any more uh, for a while and I'll just do some educational videos or some readings or some discussions of some stuff that I've had already. But uh, for now, that's my haul. Hope you like it. Please feel free to comment. I would love to get some comments, whatever you think, conditions, if I'm crazy, if I'm way off, if I overpaid, if, uh, if I get a steal, if... Um, if you like them, you hate them, I don't care. But, or if you just hate the way I sound when I'm talking, if I'm dragging on too long, whatever, uh, by all means, um, leave a comment. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time at God Loves Comics. Goodbye.